refining my intentions on a daily basis is one of my favorite, favorite habits. And so what I do every day is I'll look at the plethora of options that I have available, all of the things, whether it's deals, ideas, thoughts, projects, offers, whatever it is. And on top of all of them, I'll write down why I would do that. And if the reason is often ego, pride, envy, competition, jealousy, and sometimes it's compassion, love, joy, passion, purpose, meaning, fulfillment. And so what I like to do is I like to refine my intentions, which I class as seeds and weeds every day. So I want to plant more seeds in the garden of my life. Seeds are things that are like compassion, love, purpose, fulfillment, meaning, joy, service. And weeds are when we do things out of ego, envy, competition. And so every day, I'm plucking out the weeds out of my life, and I'm trying to plant more seeds. How many of you want to be gardeners with me? Yeah? And I do that every day because it's so easy for me to confuse the weeds as seeds. It's so often that I've let ego grow so strong inside of me, it took me forever to notice that was a weed. So I have to do it every day. So that's one of my biggest pieces of advice. I do it every single day. It's made a huge difference in making sure I make the right choices, the right decisions with people, places, and projects that I'm involved in. And when you refine that intention, and it gets purer and purer and purer, not that we're ever fully pure, but it gets purer and purer and purer, you'll just see magic happen around you. You know, I had one of my teachers that has kept saying to me for years, he goes, if you want to move three steps forward, you have to go three steps deep. And so if I'm not going forward, I know it's because I haven't gone deep. So for me, that's a big priority for me. And that's what I try and do. And I'm, I try and do that every day, but I also believe in immersive experiences. So a lot of us today, we live in this world, which is like 10 minutes a day. Do it for 10 minutes a day, everything will be great. And that is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But imagine you spent with a boy or a girl, your partner, whoever it was, someone that you just started dating. Imagine you spent 10 minutes a day with them. How long would it take you to figure out whether you wanted to fall in love with them or not? Probably a long time. And so when you go immersive, if you spend a weekend away with someone, you know whether you like them or not. And meditation, mindfulness, all these habits are the same. The more you immerse yourself, the more you get an experience that stays with you, the more that you can live with that experience and keep going back to it for 10 minutes a day. So I really believe in immersive experiences. I love the 10 minute a day advice, but I also deeply believe in having a deep, immersive, absorbed experience that completely takes over your whole body, mind and soul. For me, one of the ways I've always thought about it is you can't take the world further than where you visited internally. So for me, every person that we're meeting already has that journey right there. And all you're asking them to do is look inwards as opposed to outward. And I think it's something nice for us to know so that we don't judge and label people. We don't walk around and think, oh, those are spiritual people. Those are not spiritual people. Because, yeah, we're all. Yeah. We're all spiritual people. And it's just that some are covered. It's like the sun is always out. It's just get covered by the clouds, and that's us. We've just been covered. And we get covered by those clouds, and they cloud our identity, they cloud our perception. And so all we're doing for ourselves and others is clearing out the clouds. And the more we do that for ourselves, the more we can do it for others, and the more we do it for others, the more we do it for ourselves. And is meditation the only process that you use to clear out the clouds, or is there other things that you explore? I think meditation today is, is a tool, and, and it's a great tool in your toolkit, but it's really about how we're processing the whole time, how we're living the whole time outside of that. And so when I do two hours of meditation a day, the, my teachers would always say to me, well, what are you doing for the other 22 hours you're awake? Right, that would always be the question. And so I read a study recently that said that men and women were asked either to sit alone with their thoughts for 15 minutes, or if they didn't want to do that, they could give themselves an electric shock. It's a true study. 60% of men chose an electric shock. <laughs> True story. And 30% of women chose an electric shock. These are real, normal people. And when they were asked why they did that, they just said, I don't think I can sit. What am I going to do for 15 minutes? <laughs> 
And so for me, meditation is an important part of the cloud, but it's also reflection, introspection, journaling, the ability to have a connection that's deeper than you, sitting down with people who can help you move the clouds, because it's not always you on your own. You need others to come in and help you do that. So it's multiple things. It's multiple things. I think meditation's a, a key facet of it, but not the, not the be-all and end-all of it. If you look at the ocean and you see someone drowning, you want to help them. But if you go in too soon and you're not strong enough, it's likely that you're going to get pulled in. And at that point, it's easier to shout out to a lifeguard who can come along, who's trained, who's disciplined, who's committed, who can go and make a difference. And so for me in my life, I'm always looking at if I can't bring someone up, I'm not going to spend time with them if they're going to pull me down. And it's drawing that line for me. So if I've been ever scared about my spirituality, rather than putting them down and going, oh, I'm not spending time with them because I'm putting them down, if I can't lift them up, then I'm going to protect myself by not being dragged down. But if I can pull them up, if I can lift them up, then that's when I'm able to go into that space and make an impact and make a difference. And that line has really helped me not go crazy because now I'm not doing it based on a judgment of them. I'm reflecting on my own abilities and flaws and, and the difference I can make. And I'm taking a, taking a stance. It's like someone asked me the other day, what is a complaint? And we were talking about litter. A complaint is you see a piece of trash on the floor and you go, oh, LA is so dirty. You've removed the agency that you can have an impact on that. A statement is, oh, LA's a bit dirty, there's trash on the floor, I'm gonna pick that up and throw it away, right? Taking that responsibility. So when we're irresponsible in our spiritual lives, we judge everyone and judge everything. And we mature, we start looking at it through compassion, empathy, and connection, and recognize we were just there a few years ago. And that's the biggest anchor in my life, is recognizing that I was addicted to, and still am in different ways, things that I don't believe are good for me spiritually. And I was, that, I was that guy, I was that kid, you know? And it's taken a journey and someone had to believe in me. Someone had to invest in me. Someone had to reach their hand without being forced in and pull me out. Our family and our friends will be more inspired by our example than our education. They're gonna change when they see us change. They're gonna transform when they see us genuinely transform. They're, they're not fascinated by how much you've learned and how much you know, and you can do a headstand now, and you know, you can, you know, you can do all these chakras and mudras, and you know all these Sanskrit words, and you know, like, that, that doesn't move the people that have known you since you were young or have known you before, and that doesn't make an impact on them. What makes an impact on them is your example and your transformation and the, the amount you've changed. I remember someone asked a similar question, but in a, not as nicely as you did. You, you asked it very respectfully. But when I, was in, when I was a monk, this question was asked to my teacher. He was asked by someone in the crowd, they said to him, they said, I'm trying so hard to, you know, get my family to become spiritual and I'm doing everything and they don't listen to me and I'm trying really hard and it's not working and I'm like doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I'm teaching them this and I'm taking them this and nothing's happening. And they were a student of his. And my teacher said to him, they said, he said, tolerate them as I'm tolerating you. The lesson I got from that is that someone's done that for us like someone's been patiently waiting for me to transform, for me to grow, whether it's a mentor, a guide, a guru, a teacher, or whatever it is. Like there's someone in our life in any transformation who's also waiting for us. So part of it is patience. Patience is a huge thing. You're never going to change someone or make them do something. And half the time, you just have to get out of the way. Introduce them to who they're inspired by. Don't try and be their inspiration. Right? And I often say that to, to even, even in parenting situations, like when parents introduce their kids to people they're inspired by, that will help the kids more than telling the kids to do the right thing. And, and I've seen that happen so often when you, when you look at sports as well, like even if your father was the best actor or best sports player in the world or your mother was the best tennis player or performer or whatever it is, you're never impressed by your parents. Like we're rarely impressed by our family when we're younger. We, we get gratitude later on. But in our early days, we, we don't have that. So if you can introduce your family to people they're inspired by, that's gonna make a huge difference. And the final one, like I said at the start, was just your example. Seeing you really change, seeing your behavior change, your language change, your communication change, that's gonna give them the greatest confidence that, you know, what she's doing is right, it works. Right? The proof's in the pudding, the proof's in seeing you actually make that change.